Democracy Now!'s youth correspondent, Soledad Aguilar Colon, uh, from Beacon High School, a public high school here in New York, came with us to Washington, D.C., and interviewed other young people at the protest. I'm Soledad. I'm with um, Democracy Now! Can you tell me your name? My name's Alana Willinson. Um, your age, please? I'm 13 years old. Why did you guys decide to come here today? We decided to come here because I, I don't want to be scared walking into school. I want more gun reform laws, and I just want all in all just for people to be safe, and I want just people to live good lives. Like, this isn't the... This isn't the America that I wanted to grow up in. I wanted to grow up in an America with peace, not an America where kids are constantly getting killed by assault weapons. We're, we're known as the mass shooting generation. How do you think that this has affected our lives? I think that that's, like, the fact that we're even known as that generation is abs is so disgusting. And I feel that the fact that people even <laughs> sh can hold assault weapons in this day and time is just disgusting. They're not made for, they're not made for, sh they're not made for hunting. They're made for actual, that's why they're called assault weapons. They're made for assaulting people. My name is Emily Dole Rodas. I'm 17 and I'm here to march for the victims of the, every single shooting that's happened and their families. Are you with a part of an organization or? Um, I'm co-vice president of MoCo for Gun Control, which was the organization that um, organized the um, March 14th walkout. How did that start? Well, like a week after um, the shooting at Parkland, we had a walkout, and after that, all of the leaders from the different schools that organized the walkouts within their own schools decided that we needed to come together and do something as a county, and not just, and so that we would unite stronger. How has gun violence influenced or affected your community? Well, last year, there was this kid from Einstein from my school who was shot in his home, I believe, and he died from gun violence, and it's been like he had graduated already he was like on his way to college and then his life was ended by a gun so it really put it really set a tone in our school that like nobody could really shake for a few months but then what really is i guess i don't know how to say it but i guess annoying is that everything that happens like that always kind of goes away after a while and people kind of forget about it and it doesn't get the attention that it deserves what do you hope will come out of the march today? Um, I hope awareness on one on one part, and then another that Congress actually like does something because the worst part about this is that Congress is choosing NRA money over our lives when we're the future. Like if we're not here, then who's gonna who's gonna be in Congress in a few years? Who's gonna lead this country in a few years? And how have you, as we are the mass shooting generation, as they call it, how has that affected you growing up? Um, how has that affected my, just me, my life? Um, well, after the shooting in Parkland happened, it really opened my eyes and I started to fear, like, for my life in school because um, before, I, before all of this happened, uh, my school had a tendency of leaving doors open and unlocked and especially um, in the like near the art classrooms, there, the doors were always open and unlocked because we have portables in the background. Um, and I spend most of my days there, so I would like walk through the hallways like really quickly, and like every single classroom I would walk into, I was looking for somewhere where I can hide or where I can escape. So, do you have lockdowns at your school? Um, we haven't really had a lockdown drill after the shooting happened, and I think it was after the no, I think. I don't remember if it was before or after the walkout, but we had a bomb threat to our school, and um, it was said that it was going to be like a replica of, or like um, an imitation of the Parkland shooting, where they like would say like it was a bomb threat, so everybody would leave, and then like they would like shoot us up, and so that was it wasn't a drill, but it was an actual lockdown, and we were in lockdown for a few hours. And can you tell me what your sign says and show it to the audience? It says women in the U.S. are 11 times more likely to be murdered with a gun compared to those living in other high-income nations um, and then to get it together, America. Um, my name is Devon Battle. I'm 17 and I'm here today because I want to take action against gun violence and um, show that, um, exercise my voice.
Are you from a certain group or I see you have a t-shirt? Yes, I'm, I go to Parkway Center City. I just came from Philly. Yeah, we're here today from Philadelphia. How has gun violence affected your community? Um, well, in my community, it's like guns. There's a lot of <laughs> there's a lot of gun violence. I lost my cousin to gun violence, and um, there's a lot of people in my community who have died from gun violence. Gun violence is so normalized in my community that when this issue first was brought to me in school, um, it was like. I'm so used to it that I didn't have much of a reaction to it. And I don't think that it should be that normalized that we become desensitized to the effects of gun violence. And so I think that I should exercise my voice more for gun control because it's gotten out of hand. Can you talk more about the incident with your cousin? Like, how did it happen? Um, my cousin was actually just an innocent bystander. Mm -hmm. And um, he was shot because he knew somebody who the person was looking for, so he was killed just because he didn't tell them where the, per where the person they were looking for was. And he, he had a whole future ahead of him. He was about to start his own business and everything. And it's happening to a lot of our youth. They're dying when they have a whole future and they're dying so young. He was only 20 and I don't think they deserve to die. I think some, something should be done and something should, laws should be enforced. What are you hoping will come out of the march today? I'm hoping that it will get enough attention and that the that people in Congress, some at least somebody in Congress, um, will feel pressured enough to do something about what's happening in our country. I'm Amaya and I'm 10 years old and we're here because if adults don't make a change, then kids will. I'm Peyton and I'm 12 years old and I'm here because adults haven't taken a stand and if they don't, we will. My name is Nicole Bates and I'm here because I'm a teacher in Florida and we need a change. What do you think about the NRA saying that they want teachers to be armed with guns? I can't imagine a worse scenario. As a teacher, we shouldn't have to put ourselves in a position where we feel like we need to run towards gun violence. We need to protect the kids. We really shouldn't even have to do that. It's a really hard situation, but we need a change in what's happening. Instead of arming us, we need to take arms away from everyone else. Thank you. And how have you been affected by gun violence? I've been evacuated this year and I've had like four lockdowns already. And it's not a good experience. Can you tell me more what the experience is like of the lockdowns? Um, they come on the intercom and we get put into a corner where there's, we get put into a corner where the wind, our teacher stands right next to the door and the blinds, we have to close them, but you can still see through them. And we're in the dark and we have two stories and everything. And it's, it's scary because we were in them for like an hour and we just have to sit there and wait. And it's not what you want to be in. Thank you guys. What are you hoping will come out of this march? I hope that people will actually start to pay attention and we will see some change. Not anybody should be able to get a gun and if they actually did something then I think we would stop seeing the violence. It's happened in other countries and when they put in laws it stopped happening and that's what we want to see happen here too. When I grow up I want to be a veterinarian, not a victim. Our lives matter. Begin to end our lives begin to end the day we become silent about things that matter. MLK. Um, why do you care more about guns than kids? I'm Zuhur al from, uh, and my age is 20, uh, 21 years old. I'm a um, teacher in the North School. Uh, I come today with uh, my students to support them and then if it's in demographics. Uh, Rowan Beckett, I come from a North School, and I'm here because I want to end gun violence. Uh, my name is Zobeda, I'm from El North School, I'm 18 years old, and I'm here to fight for the lives of the people that can't anymore, and also for the people that are still alive and at risk uh, of gun violence. My name is Parapar, I'm 18 years old, I'm from Brooklyn College, so Brooklyn, New York, and I'm here because I want better gun reforms, and I want to ensure that children would not go to school in fear, because they should be worried about their next test, not about if there's a gun, like, 
present in their um, school. It's their school, yeah. Can you guys show me your signs and talk about them a little bit? Okay, uh, my sign, I was originally going to do something from online, but then I was looking at the statistics, and one thing in common that I found was that after every shooting, almost every news outlet tries to fight to have the most like eye-catching uh, headline, and it would either be the deadliest, the bloodiest, and I found it very inconsiderate that these lives are just turned into numbers. They're just a part of this bigger like scheme of America where we're just lives that were taken, and we're not people anymore. And a lot of the time, people are like, people are like, um, this time, many more people died, so we should care. Why should we care if it's ten people? We should care before it's even one. So yeah, and we stayed up till like 2.30 doing this in the AM. <laughs> uh, she's my best friend, we were doing this like together, but I decided to just go for something simple, no more silent, no more silence and gun violence. I thought it was a good catchy um, phrase that would like stick with people. If they were to see it, they'd want to know. And I, I mean, I did it in red so it would catch eyes, but uh, I thought that the message was simple and straightforward. So I thought that it would like stick. Have you guys been affected by the lockdown in schools? Have you experienced that? Um, we had a lockdown when we were in middle school, and at that time, you don't really understand why, and I, I guess our teachers didn't want to explain it because we'd get scared, so we didn't take it seriously, but recently, after what happened in Florida, I had to speak to my principal about lockdown, about having an event, about the walkout, about participating in this march, and me and a couple of other students organized this together for our school to come together. And I just found that when I was talking about how we'd have to hide in our classrooms, hide behind desks, and not even call our parents, it just, I couldn't explain the feeling. I was scared. And I was, I was just talking to him about it. And I can't imagine the students who have to actually face it, how they're feeling right now. How has it made you feel to, have, to grow up with mass shootings surrounding you? Um, it's made me feel like our government doesn't really give a about our lives. I don't know if I'm allowed to say that. But I feel like to them money is important and their own citizens aren't. And we're the ones that elect them. And come what may, these kids that you see here today, some may, some aren't even teenagers, but soon they will be and will be, will be able to vote. Well, I can vote, but we're going to vote them out. So either they hear us or they don't, but we're going to make them. And did you guys participate in the walkout last Wednesday? Yes, we did. Um, we had to talk to our principal about precautions to take, because we're a Muslim school, a private school. So we had to take an Islamophobia into account. But we did talk to our principal about it, and it was amazing because you do have those one or two people who, like one guy pointed a, a, a gun at us with his fingers, and then someone gave the middle finger, but then you have those multiple people honking their cars, they're screaming, they're proud of you, and they agree with you, and it was just an amazing feeling to be a part of this big movement. Can you talk more about um, Islamophobia and gun violence and how they're correlated? Um, I feel like people think that a lot of things are a race issue and they're not specifically for this this is not a race issue it includes everybody but islamophobia and gun violence i feel like when i'm specifically talking about something i'm more of more i'm more at a risk because i'm muslim and i feel like i could be targeted easily and because i know how it feels like to be a victim i don't want to make anyone else feel that way especially kids my name is leo pranga i'm 16 i'm from albania i go to roseville high school from yonkers public schools can you tell me why you're here today? Uh, we're here to march together and show our presence uh, to uh, the country and show our, our movement, marching together for gun, uh, gun control. And how has gun violence affected your community? Well, it really scares us, uh, most of us, because we have had a threat to our school and it really scared a lot of us. It, it scared us to the point where a lot of us didn't come and a lot of classes were empty. So to have this march, it shows that we're not scared. We're here to stand together and show that we need change. We need change in our community. We need to be together and show our presence to our country and our president. And what will you hope will come out of this march today? I hope, I hope the awareness will come uh, to people who are very ignorant and unable to see how we feel. And, and I hope that every single one of us here are able to see each single poster that every person has written down and created by their own hands and take in their feelings and their opinions.
Hi, I'm Casey. I'm also from um, Riverside High School in Yonkers, and I'm 18 years old. And the reason why I'm here today, I'm here to show that one person can make a big change. That's why I'm here. I'm here to represent every single person that couldn't be here today. I'm here to make a change, to make a difference in the country. What are you hoping will come out of the march today? I'm hoping that um, the government will become more aware that this is going to be the last shooting that has is going to ever happen in schools or anywhere. And to just be more like to help us more to help the students to help the teachers like I feel like gun violence isn't needed you know everyone just needs to um, learn how to understand each other my name is Diana Stewart Perkins I come from Montclair New Jersey and I'm here because I'm a public school teacher can you talk about um, the NRA saying that teachers should be armed with guns I think the NRA should visit a school during a practice lockdown and see what it's like. How the kids cower in a corner, how we're supposed to be their protectors, teachers. We're also cowering. We place ourselves closest to the front doors, the doors of our classroom to protect our kids. And having a gun would not help. It would not help at all. Just like the NRA, those people cannot teach. I don't know why they would expect us to all of a sudden become experts protecting children with arms. And can you read your sign for us? Yes, I have a two-sided sign. One is, I'm an English teacher, not a gun slinger. And the other is, says at the top, we have a little post-it with a message from one of my students, Lucy. It reads, arms are for hugging, and then she signs her name. My poster says, a message from Lucy, and underneath, I'm marching for my students like Lucy. Lucy is one of the students in my school that uh, walked out on Wednesday, last Wednesday, to protest. Can you talk about how gun violence, or especially our generation, is known as the mass shooting generation? Can you tell me how this has affected your kids, or have you seen them? Well, I can tell you that I have two sons, 30 and 27, and this was normal for them to have, depending on what school it is, to have this um, hide, this, uh, this practice of preparing for uh, a shooter. And I didn't know until a couple of years ago, and again, I have a son who's 30, who told me it was normal. And he told me that in the context of me describing how I am hiding with these students and I have nothing to protect them and we are sitting ducks in any given room where we are. So it is normal for at least people who are 30 and the students in my school, I'm new to this particular school I'm teaching this year, and to watch the anxiety come up in their faces for me to have to tell them shut off your phones just so that we would not signal an active shooter to come in here. The, our information is minimal and I'm supposed to save lives and I'm good to protect younger students but I'm completely ill-equipped but having a gun will not equip me. Making sure people don't get guns, that equips me to be a teacher and to not see these students go into this, uh, this shell shock mode, this, uh, this PTSD just from having grown up, having to shelter from an active shooter as a practice. Can you talk about the schools in New Jersey that were penalizing students for walking out last Wednesday? I can't talk about that because in my school the administration made it possible for our students to walk out. Now some students stayed out beyond the allotted time but there was no punishment. I'm Carolyn Graff and I'm here because as a mother of four I have had enough of the gun violence. And where are you from? Where are you come from? Annapolis, Maryland. Wow. And with the gun shooting that just happened in Annapolis, how has that affected you? It was in Southern Maryland, and I, you know, the one thing, I, my main thought on it was we were lucky it was just a handgun versus a semi-automatic, and that was why the death toll was low compared to the mass shootings with the mass casualties that we've seen elsewhere. So. For better or worse, it seems like, you know, at least if they only have access to a handgun versus semi-automatics, you're not losing as many people, which is common sense. How, what are you hoping will come out of the march today? Just that it will motivate more people to vote in the midterm elections and hopefully make a major change for the midterms as well as 2020. Uh, my name is Claudia Faiva. I'm originally from Peru, but I come from Wheaton, uh, Maryland, Wheaton High School. Um, yeah, Lucia from Argentina originally, but we both teach in Wheaton High School, MCPS. Why are you guys here today? What was that? Why are you guys here today? Um, because we don't want to fear for our lives when we go to work. Uh, we want to teach without thinking that we may not go back home. Yes.
I I'm here because I love I am passionate about education passionate about teaching not caring again not being fearful like my, my colleague said fearful about not coming back to school back home and, and it's a reality sadly yeah, and we definitely don't want to carry guns in our schools. No, I, no like, we shouldn't. We don't Fix the copy armed. first, and then. No. And then. <laughs> yeah, no, no. 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 Great. And, and what are you guys hoping will come out of the march today? Really, common sense gun reform. I mean, it should. This talk should have been years ago, centuries ago. We shouldn't. It's sad that it's it's coming to this point, but I, I hope that with this, that with donations, that with people speaking out, with artists coming out, with politicians and, and being on the right side, that um, that I sh that I wouldn't be scared, that my kids are not going to be scared, that teaching it's fun and not fearful. I see you guys have signs. Can you read them for me? Uh, sure. This one says, "Fear um, has no place in the school." In school, a student did this um, yesterday. So this is his work. Yeah, mine says books instead of bullets. What are the lockdown practices that you guys have done in your schools? The lockdown practices, um, we do it often. Um, Sometimes we know that they're real, they're, they're real, they're, that they're fake, and sometimes we don't know. And it's a nerve-wracking moment. Uh, and then after that, you have to continue teaching. So it is, yeah. It's hard to have to, you know, put yourself together again after not knowing if it was an actual, you know, a, a lockdown or it was just a uh, practice one. But we should, it shouldn't. Be, I shouldn't feel like that at my workplace doing something that I love so much, you know. And the, la the last lo lockdown that we have, it was 10 minutes uh, taken um, away from instruction, and that shouldn't be the case. Those 10 minutes should be precious for the kids to keep learning, not be trying to hide from bullets. Um, my name is Capen, I'm 13, um, and I signed that I march because I want change. Um, I think it's really important that we not only acknowledge that this is happening, but that we do something about it. Because if we just stand around being bystanders, nothing is going to change and history will keep repeating itself and more people will keep dying. Um, so I think that we need to change the fact that people's lives are being lost and that we should have more restrictions, more laws that will protect us from happening, like protect this, yeah. And how have you been affected by gun violence? Um, well, we had this UPS driver who would always come to our door, um, and he loved my dog. He would always bring treats. There was a UPS shooting, um, I think, last year, um, and he was one of the people who got shot. Um, yeah, and he had been our deliverer for many years. I'm Nadira. Um, you know, we have family who've lost their lives. We have students who've lost, lost their lives. Uh, we are here for Parkland, we are here for Chicago, we're here for Oakland. We're here for our lives, we're here for black lives, we're here for Parkland lives. Um, what do you hope will come out of this march? You know, I think, honestly, when uh, enough, I hope that when enough white people are involved in the conversation and willing to stand up and be heard, that uh, politicians will pay attention, because clearly, like a lot of the speakers have said, when Chicago kids, when DC kids, when urban kids die, it's just, you know, it's our problem. But hopefully there's enough attention and, and motivation to know that it's time to re reactivate the, um, the assault weapons ban and to look into uh, gun legislation in general that kills kids all over the country and adults, for that matter, and women. What do you think about the NRA saying that teachers should be armed with guns? You know, I think arming people means that you have the the risk of killing young people, particularly young people of color. So arms is not going to solve the, the, the challenges we have. Maybe that'll, that'll solve the one in whatever million chance that, that a, a, a teacher is trained enough not to hurt somebody, not to hurt one of their students. We know where there's more guns, there's more senseless death. So we can't have that. And I don't believe that that would, would serve to protect particularly black and brown children. Maybe some other kids, but not our children. Uh, my name is Simon Debesai. I'm a 10th grader at Spring High School. I'm 15, and I'm here protesting with the rest of my organization, Mocha Kamigani Students for Gun Control. We're here to make sure we can 
let legislators know that our voices matter and that we exist and that we will demand change in the upcoming midterm election. Can you tell me more about the organization MOCA that you started? Um, so we originally wanted to have a countywide walkout that was going to go from schools across the county and converge at a single point and end up in a rally at the Capitol. And we were successful. We brought out over 3,000 students on March 14th, uh, just last week. And we also held 17 minutes of silence at the White House in solidarity with the victims from Parkland. Um, so from then on, they just spiraled into, we started to try to broaden our horizons and try to lobby uh, sit-ins at Senate offices. And we're going to continue protesting until change comes. Can you read your sign for us? Um, so the irony of my sign is how we're the students, and yet we're going to the ones giving Congress the, uh, <laughs> the grades. So bribes, A+, plus, in action, A+, plus, thoughts and prayers, A+. Plus. <laughs> but gun reform and common sense is definitely an F-, and their next test is definitely going to be in the upcoming election. Something I'm looking forward to.